Hey guys, Doug Childs here. This is WarriorsandWildMen.com. Why do men flee from church faster than a burrito dipped in Vaseline goes through your digestive system? Why are church pews filled with women and sports arenas and the bar stools at Twin Peaks filled with dudes? The church classically faults the Enlightenment and it spawned the Industrial Revolution. But both didn't affect numerically men and other religions. They had an influence on man's disappearance, but I'm convinced the stage was set way before these movements emerged. The primary reason, I believe, can be traced back to the 13th century and the influence of Bernard of Clairvaux. Until the 13th century, men and women participated equally within the life of the church. But after the 13th century, finding a man in a pew became looking for truth on CNN. From the 13th century onward, what used to be a balanced, if not dominated, male culture sees a demographic seismic shift towards the ladies and the men, well, they're never to return in mass. They never recover numerically. Like I stated, I lay the blame, the bloody glove, primarily on the floorboard of Bernard's Ford Bronco. I'm sorry, his Mazda Miata. He's the one who made men do the forced gump out of church and into sports, fascism, war, and into masculinity as a religion, divorced from Christian influence. Like Edgar Winter at a black Muslim rally in Harlem, the influence of Bernard de Clairvaux on the high Middle Ages is hard to miss. So, who is Bernard de Clairvaux and why do I put him at the top of the culpability flowchart? Well, Bernard de Clairvaux was a monk. He was celibate. He renounced the world. What else did he do? Oh, he wrote songs and let's see. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, he started the Crusades. Bernard's effects are still being felt in the geopolitical world of Europe and in the Middle East. So what did Bernie do to make men flee? Well, Bernie introduced eroticism into the mix of his sermons and songs that devolved into a spirituality that he probably would think sucks. Bernard introduced and propagated a spirituality, check this out, that cultivated the affections in private devotion and in corporate worship, especially, y'all ready? The affection of Eros. Yeah. That's what made men look at church like a dog looks at its bowl when you change its food on him. His use of erotic language in describing the soul's relationship with God, well, that was very appealing to the ladies and, uh, yeah, very, very unappealing to men. Hey, this is Doug Giles. You've been listening to warriorsandwildmen.com.